Hello everybody, welcome back to the Health Bridge. This is Dr. Pedram Shojai, and we got a special edition over here today because Dr. Sarah had something come up and she couldn't be on the show today. So instead of the Health Bridge, I think we're gonna call it the Health Bank. I'm gonna hang out over here on the Eastern side. Uh, I have a good friend and special guest here with us today, my buddy Tristan Triscott, co-founder of the Satori Method. Uh, and we're gonna get into what it is that he does uh, throughout the course here because guess what today's chi day we're gonna talk about what chi is how vitality flows and, and kind of how we do stuff on that side of the fence that side of the medicine Tristan welcome to the show man hey buddy I'm so happy to be here with you again we always have a great time we cut to the chase I love it that's it man that's it so we you know so we get to like play today we don't have the uh, adult supervision of Sarah <laughs> I don't know Sarah, but it's like you probably need that for time. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I was actually with her all weekend filming a bunch of stuff. She's a delightful human being. Uh, Harvard-trained medical doctor, really kind of down for um, integrative medicine. So we have, a, we have a lot of fun on the show. Um, uh, today... Um, and she'll be listening to this in her earbuds, so we miss you, Sarah. Um, so today, what I really want to do is talk about this thing called chi, right? Because uh, it's, it's out there. It, it's, the meme is out there, right? And people you know, know that there's this thing called chi that the acupuncturists mess with, or maybe you know, if, you, if you're sophisticated enough, you know that you know, that's what Tai Chi and Qigong are talking about. But I don't think you know, it's been teased out very well for the audience. And when we're talking about having good chi and, and, and kind of getting it flowing for people's health, um, I know people kind of uh, could nod, but um, I'd like to tease it out today. Good. Good, good. Yeah, I, I love teaching it, but uh, you know, for years I always thought it was just an idea. And being a martial artist of 30 years, you and I both know that we like to feel it, right? We want, we're going to make a physical contact. I can hit a bag, I can hit you. I, that's power. That's the kind of power that my brain can register. But we're talking about a different power or an energy, as you say. It's a, a, a vitality, a life force. That was a little woo-woo for me for a long time. And I was a meditator and breathing and working on things like pranayama and I could feel some energies moving in my body but I never uh, felt the chi the way I would hear the tai chi masters talk about it like actually between your hands like yeah. the tingling it, yeah and and so did you keep practicing to get to the point where one day you had one of those moments where you're like holy crap that's it that's the thing man you if you stay the course long enough and, and you know the right techniques and you apply it in the right way you're going to have that aha moment. And I do remember the first time I was practicing a Qigong exercise. I had to learn it because I injured my back in my dojo. I know we've talked about that in the past. And I was down for the count, man, for five years trying every alternative treatment you can think of, including a $90,000 surgery in Beverly Hills that failed me and left me worse off. So I was at the end of my rope, so I kept trying. Mm. And I found a Qigong master who knew what he was doing. And so because of his instruction and being, you know, a dedicated student, I had a breakthrough and I was doing one of the standing meditations and I was just doing the breathing and working the hands flowing in and out. And I was just very open still. I was an open-minded skeptic. I mm. think that's a key point. Just be open-minded about it. But I, they teach you this thing where you take the chi, you harness it, and then you, you store it in your body. So I was going through the movement and I had my eyes closed and I felt a physical pressure on my body. And it kind of knocked me back a little. I almost felt like I pushed into myself and I opened my eyes and my hands were not touching me, not my physical body. And I had pushed into the energy body and felt it for the first time. And it tripped me out and I had that, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was sold, man. That was it. Yep. Line and sinker, I was going to run that thing up the flagpole. Yep. You know, one of my favorite uh, storylines in this is people hear that, you know, I've practiced acupuncture for 20 years or do Qigong and all that kind of stuff. And every once in a while, someone will look at me and be like, oh, wow, that's cool. Man, so, so you, you really believe in that stuff, huh? Yeah. And I always got to stop and say, no, 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 no. I mean, I can believe in the Tooth Fairy or Santa Claus. Um, I don't really, I'm not going to spend my whole life dedicated to something that I'm just going to believe in. I have experienced this. I see it work every day. I feel it in my body. I can use it to heal patients. So this isn't this is a this is a transition between belief and experience. And so, you know, and I always tell students, I don't want you to believe in chi. That's silly. Yes. I'm gonna show you how to feel it, and once you experience it, no one can take that away from you. That's right. 
Then you know like you know like you know. Belief is maybe helpful on the way to get you going. You got to have a belief in your teacher or belief in a method or whatever. But if I tell you all day long, surfing is awesome, surfing is awesome, you're sitting on the shore going, yeah, it looks really cool, you don't know. And you're going to mm. stop sitting on the shore eventually. But get you out on the board in the water and you taste it, you're going to become a surfer. So I am so into Qigong now and I love sharing it with my students. And I love seeing those open minded skeptics pop. And they go, I felt tingling in my hand, Sensei. I felt warmth. I felt a buzzing. And then as it evolves, they feel areas open up and they have experiences that are beyond just a physical sensation. We should go there. Your consciousness changes, your vitality in your body, but it keeps going. I guess we could get into Shen later. Yeah, yeah. So well, let's, let's talk about the architecture, right? So there's Jing, Qi, and Shen. Jing is like your essence. Qi is the energy, and Shen is the spirit. Uh, and the metaphor that I like for how it's drawn is like a candle. So the wax would be the Jing or the essence. The fire would be the Qi uh, or the energy, and then the glow around that would be the Shen or the spirit. Very nicely said. I like that. That's very clear. That, yeah, that's, I just pulled that out of a book, man. I, w I wish I was original. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like the flower. You know, everyone has their analogy. But that's, that's really good. I hadn't heard that one. That's, that's great. Yeah, man, we're born with this primordial life force that the uh, master's called Jing. You know, and it's up to us to not tap that thing out so fast. Otherwise, expired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the world we live in is I'm just going to burn the candle from both ends, if not all ends and kind of get through this fiscal year and next year I'm going to you know, go crash in Hawaii and, and you know, lie to myself that I'm going to be able to catch up on all my insanity and that's just, that doesn't happen and people's systems start to break down and then they kind of splash up on the beach of, of some doctor's office saying help. Yes. Right? And, and a lot of what, you know, and, and I've had this as a clinician, right? It's like, oh my God, all these people show up, say, look, I've tried everything. Like you, you're the typical kind of dude that would show up in my clinic and be like, hey, I had a $90,000 surgery. All these other people failed me. You're my only hope. I hope this crap works, right? And I'm like, wow, um, I would have really liked to have had this conversation with you three years ago, maybe <laughs> even pre-injury, you know what I mean? But like, okay, let's deal with it. And so um, I'm kind of on a mission to judo flip the way the industry works to kind of put this stuff on the front facing end so you don't have people get so destroyed. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how establishing the good flow of chi and the strength of that, that volume of kind of chi and jing and shen in your body can actually help offset disease and, and restore vitality. Yeah, I love how you framed it because normally people won't pay attention to this until they're in pain and suffering and tried everything else. Unless you already had some kind of experience with energy, you're probably not going to look there first. And it's underneath, right? We're so aware of the physical form. We look at fixing things on a physical level, as we should, right? There are things that we can do to manipulate the physical body or the foods that we eat, the medicines that we take. But the chi is the essence of life, man. We're born with a certain charge, a certain amount of energy. And when that thing drops, not only when it drops, drops, we're flatlined. But as it drops, we start to have these symptomologies show up. And so I would say for most people, they're probably not even going to be interested in chi until they're in pain. But if you're one of the smart ones and you get it and you understand what we're talking about today, you're going to do everything you can to build your chi back up and maintain it and not burn it out. Because you will, you will hit that point where your life force goes down and you're not a happy camper. So what do you do? Uh, obviously, learn Qigong, which means working with energy. And people are doing, I believe, Qigong in a very natural way, like a baby when you watch a baby breathe, they breathe from the lower belly. A dog or a cat that's not stressed out, that's sleeping, you see the belly going up and down. I usually start people there, Pedro, just learning uh, how to return to normal breathing. Mm. So that's infusing the body with the life force. And then I teach them how to harvest the energy from the breath. More nei gong, right? Mm -hmm. Eat skill. Because you got to do that with your mind. Just like when you eat food, your body digests it with your digestive system and you assimilate the energy from the food. How do you assimilate the energy from the breath? Mm. So I'm going I'm to have a Sarah moment right now, which is like, okay, <laughs> okay, stop the presses. You just said harvest energy from the breath. Right. Explain that, right? Like, she, you know, I could just, I'm, I'm channeling, channeling her into the conversation right now. Yeah, um, that's something that, like, you and I could take for granted because we've been playing around in these circles for 20 years. But how does one harvest energy from anything, let alone the breath? I'd love to tease that out. Yeah, let's do, let's do that. Well, you guys have probably heard the saying, where your attention goes, 
energy flows. Whatever we put our attention on, we focus on that, something shifts. You know, we have an action step that happens. On the inside, like I'm sure everybody can feel stress when it, it builds up in the body. Well, that's coming from your mind most of the time, right? You have stressful thoughts and it translates into tension in the body. Well, what's the opposite of that? Having positive, healthy, fluid thoughts, you're going to have the opposite of stress. You're going to elicit the relaxation response and your body will follow suit. What we found with energy is that if you can focus using your mind on the breath, you can send the energy into different parts of your body. So I would start there. I would just teach people how to put their hands on their belly and just bring their mind into their breath. And all of a sudden, they start to feel a state shift. Mm -hmm. Whether they believe that's energy or not, we could say the nervous system's calming down, yada, yada. But over time, if you keep putting your mind in the breath, you start to feel kind of an energetic buzz. Take it on, on uh, face value. Try it. That's how I would start a student. Love that. Love that. You know, one of the things I really like about your style is that you actually actively have a martial arts dojo. You have students coming through. And, you know, a lot of the people kind of in our space are really speculative and get into uh, nuanced conversations about X, Y, and Z and, 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 and all these kind of deep level visualizations that, you know, only, you know, six other guys can understand. But really, What's the point of any of this if you can't explain it to a novice coming in off the street and then working them into finding their vitality, finding their chi, and getting good at this stuff? And so I really respect what you're doing there because I mean, it's much harder, right, to get, get people who are in there saying, hey, fix it, right, to turn around and understand how to become a master of their own destiny and manifest, you know, the movement of power within their consciousness. But that's the only game in town. So you're, you're, you're you know, you're the boots on the ground, man. So I got to take my hat off to you. Cheers. It's my laboratory, man. 22 years of being in that laboratory working with real people, myself and my students, and like figuring out, does this work? And acid test everything. Like as a self-defense teacher, for example, I will never teach somebody something that I don't know that this potentially could save their life. You mm -hmm. show some wazoo weird kata move or something that doesn't work, you just did a disservice. Because mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that person can get harmed or killed. Same thing with energy, man. People can get whacked out. If you don't teach it in the right way or somebody doesn't know what they're doing with the needles, et cetera, you can mess people up really bad. Oh, yeah. So I, I take it as a great responsibility to know what I'm talking about and to always be open to learn more. I love that. Okay. I, I love that. Okay, so let's tease this out a little bit for the audience because now we're talking about healing and martial arts and this chi thing kind of falling on the saddle between the two. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the scholar warrior, you know, let's talk about the, the essence of how the ancient Chinese and Asian cultures used this chi universally for all things that they did. Okay, well, life force, right? The moment we were out of the womb, the first thing we do is we take that breath and we're now nourishing ourselves. Mommy was doing it through the umbilical cord the whole time, giving us oxygen, giving us food. So I usually start there with myself as, okay, I have breathed in life. Now it's up to me what I do with that as I exhale. So mm -hmm. that's philosophical perhaps. But so you're feeding yourself life and now you get to choose how you want to shape that energy with your mind mm -hmm. and then your actions. So you talked about life and how does you know the ancient ones see it. Uh, I can't go back that far, but I know what I can do <laughs> is I take the charge. We call it big chi, right? So we do everything we possibly can to build the life force energy. And we can talk about food. We can talk about the right amount of sleep. We can talk about clean water environment. We can talk about qigong, working with the chi ourselves. We build this charge. And then you feel vitality. To me, that's what vitality is. It's a charge. It's life force flowing through you in a healthy way. And now what do you want to do with that? I love that you always talk about purpose. Like, you know, real living. Like, okay, so we talk about this esoteric, esoteric stuff. Yay, I can sit on a pillow or I can stand and do this stuff. What do I do with it? Mm. Okay, I'm healthy. Good. Now what? I got to mm. pay it forward. I got to do stuff. And I believe that you just take that energy and you focus it into your business. You focus it into raising your children. You focus it into growing your company, whatever it is that you do. So that's how I start playing with the concept of chi in the real world. I love that, man. That's, that's so important of a point because 
a lot of people, especially you'll see this in the youth, right? Is they say, you know, uh, youth is wasted on the young. Is, you know, you're so full of vitality before you know that you can be missing it, you squander it, right? And so when we got it, it doesn't matter. We're focused on the next thing yeah. versus getting it, cultivating it, and then being able to channel it. So some of the, the, the best students I've worked with and best patients I've worked with are people that were very sick, regained their vitality, realized how precious the stuff is, and then uh, treasured it, right? We call them the three treasures in, yes. in the Chinese system. And so, and I really like where you're going with that because the whole point is energy goes through everything. It's not, it's, you know, we have this, this encapsulation uh, mentality where everything we want to do is like, okay, well, I do my Tai Chi and that's good for my health. And then I do my kickboxing and that's good for my physiology and all that. And it's all of this working together makes you a purpose-driven powerful person in the universe and some of those powerful people I know apply these techniques into every facet of their lives because they don't see a difference. I could share a model with uh, our listeners about how I teach this in my martial arts school that I think would be helpful and would make sense as to what we're talking about. Bring it, man. Cool? All right, Bring so it, yeah. martial arts school is called a dojo. It means it's a, a place that you practice being in harmony with the flow of life, right? So we have three circles. We have a concentric circle in the middle. We have one a little bit around that, a little bit bigger, and then we have the final circle. So the middle circle is called the dojo, and it's where you come in, you bow, you get on the mats, and you do your training. And all of your training uh, in martial arts is kind of like combative. So you're learning to overcome fear, you're learning to overcome aggression, you're learning how to flow, you're learning all these wonderful things about your mind and your body and how to integrate and synchronize them. And the more that you do that, the more masterful you become. So that's the dojo. And I always tell the students there's an inner dojo. There's a dojo inside. So your body's like a dojo. It's like a temple. And there's a battle that happens within as well with your own thoughts and fears and the ego. So I always say to the guys when we sit to meditate and girls, now we go into the inner dojo. It's not always about fighting though because on the other side of fighting is peace and love and harmony and vitality. So the training in the dojo is to build vitality. The inner dojo is to awaken the inner vitality. But now we have the big circle on the outside. We call this the outer dojo, and that's training also, and that's your relationship with your husband or wife, and raising your kids, and running your business, and your friendships, and your travel, and all the moving parts of life. So we have the three dojos, but they're all connected, and in the very, very center lies your core purpose, who you are as a person, what you stand for, what makes you tick, what gives you life. And the more clear you can get, like your clients that come in, your patients, and they have this illness, this disease, it changes them. And they find new purpose in life. And they rebuild themselves from the inside out. And then it infuses and sprays out into all aspects of what they do. That's how we build this out. Awesome. Awesome. This is something that's so refreshing to hear for the Western mind, right? Because we've compartmentalized everything. Oh, well, you're stressed out. Go see a psychologist. You have, you know, a tummy ache. Go see a tummy doctor. Um, you know, and if you have some sort of spiritual malady, you go to the priest and, and, and you know, say Hail Marys or whatever, whatever you're going to do, right? And, and everything is kind of broken and fragmented in a way where we can't have a, a universal system for understanding life, which is how the Asian systems worked. And so, you know, I came from UCLA pre-medicine, right? I was doing that thing. And I just saw so much more life and abundance and just wonderful things happening on the eastern side of things that it just, it was a, yeah, see ya, exactly. I was pre-med also, UC Irvine. Yeah, yeah, see ya. And it's funny that you're UC Irvine because I'm standing in Irvine right now. <laughs> <laughs> Love to come back to your old alma mater here. I like Laguna Park just on the outside. Yeah, yeah, man. The beach is where it's at. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's one of these things where, you know, you're you're a normal dude, right? I'm a normal dude. Well, until you talk to me, right? But, like, we're, we're just guys that come from the West that found this thing in the East. And one of the best parts about talking with you and kind of diving into this stuff with you is that you're not getting all weird and flowery and mastery. You know what I mean? Like the, a lot of the people that go into this space really need to create this like student master guru relationship and, and really kind of like milk this. So I, I see a lot of people go awry and it's not like the, there's the sensei or the sifu 
doesn't have a role, right? Like you are a, a inspirational teacher and a leader for your students, but you're trying to get them to find their own inner sensei, right? You're trying to stoke their fires and not get a bunch of followers, which right. is what I want to caution the listeners on is like there's a lot of whack jobs out there and you know, it's got to be someone who's there to make you better, not make you, you know, revolve around their star sort of thing. Well said, brother. Well said. It's so true. There's a lot of wannabe gurus out there. There's a lot of people with big egos playing a role of I'm so spiritual. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's their own insecurity. The true service is empowering another and lifting them up. And anytime somebody wants to throw that on you, great that somebody wants to be appreciative. Great that somebody wants to say thank you for helping me. But put that mirror up. That's your beauty. That's your power. You own that. You yeah. own that. That's the best teachers. And the best teachers are amazing students, as we know, and all teachers make mistakes. And the thing that I respect about a true teacher is a true teacher will say, yep, I bit the dust. Let me use those techniques I've been teaching you and show you how I'm going to apply them and that they do work. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, because life is a laboratory and uh, you know everything is so speculative and theoretical in a lot of those circles and I don't buy any of that right like I don't do anything that doesn't work period right so you get into this stuff where you get into this kind of belief based stuff where it's like oh I'm gonna you know hum and ha and do all this stuff and hey I don't feel anything I don't feel anything and and so I'd always ask be like okay well how long do I need to practice this to kind of get it and I would give it its due course right and I'd only stay with people who were real until it either worked or it didn't work but I would test it with myself because I agree look Medicine does that all the time, right? We have clinical trials. And so if we got a little bit more scientific about how things worked on the Eastern side, there are so many powerful methodologies that are helping people every single day. I mean, uh, we, let's, let's name some, some syndromes that have walked into your universe uh, that are now better, right? Headaches, chronic fatigue, back pain. I mean, what do you got? I got MS, man. I got a guy walked in on a cane going blind and deaf on one ear, couldn't balance himself. Guess what? He's a black belt now. Right on. He rewired his brain using meditation, qigong, visualization, affirmations, and being consistent. Right on. He's a badass black belt now. And the prognosis was not good for his MS. Hmm. How does that happen? They wrote a story about him in the newspaper and all this stuff. I call that a miracle in my world. It wasn't meant to happen. But that's the power of this stuff. And and I see that stuff, and I know you see that stuff. People that shouldn't be doing I'm not supposed to be punching and kicking right now. Mm -hmm. The doctor said, no, this is, sorry, kid. You know, guess what? I didn't take that. I didn't take that diagnosis. I went digging. Yeah. And this body is self regenerating, self healing. It's a masterful temple that we live in, man. And people would just stay open minded and look at the people that are teaching. That's really important because there are a lot of people, like you were talking about, you know, there's some whack jobs out there. I also see people who are talking about vitality, but I look at their body, I'm like, (laughs) excuse me, uh, where's your vitality? Mm. You talking to me all day? Don't tell me. Show me. That's it. And so I think guys like us that we can show it and we have vitality and health and energy and we're the ones teaching, I think we're making a good case for it. Yeah, and that's, I think that that's effectively where the consumer needs to be more mindful, right? If you have an obese cardiologist telling you, you know, what to eat and not eat, take a, take a cold, hard look. And so the medical system has become so separated from the actual concept of health, right? Sure. It, medicine and health don't go hand in hand anymore. It's just disease management. And so that's why so many people are just miserable and so many people are, are you know, running to complementary, alternative, uh, you know, witchcraft. I mean, I don't know what people are doing, but everyone's kind of flocking away from a lot of the conventional modalities because they're proving to be ineffectual in some ways and also they're, they're so cold and sterile and the doctors don't care. The doctors are hypocrites. And, uh, you know, and people miss the vitality. I think that's a big piece of it too is, you know, most people have some history having remembered what it feels like to have vitality. You know, when you were a kid and you go scramble up some some creek and climb a tree and not think twice of it, and now that's gone. But if you have some faint recollection that that is there and and uh, used to be a part of who you were and it used to flow through you, then you still can connect back with that chi and really kind of rewire and repipe your, your system to get back in that flow to some capacity where you'd be feeling great again. Thank you for saying that because I think people can unwind the conundrum that they've got themselves in. The essence hasn't gone anywhere, you know. Well, 
it does deplete, but your access to it is available to you. You just have to do the right things. You have to make some changes, but it's there. And there are people, the thing that helped me on my healing journey the most, Pedro, other than all the techniques, was people's stories. People telling me that they did it. That inspired me so much. That gave me the hope that it was possible. Because there's times on your journey, and I know a lot of folks listening, they're like, I don't know, man. I've tried all these things, and I'm not feeling the juice. I'm not feeling the, the love or the energy. The thing is that keep the faith. And know that there are people like us, we're talking about this, I'm here to tell you, this body can regenerate. You can unwind and return to that vitality and that youthfulness that you used to have. You'll be surprised, man. You start dropping the heaviness and the tightness on the channels, all the tension in the body and all the stress signals, the maladaptive signals that have happened from our crazy world that we live in today, the information overload and all the fear stuff. We know about the nocebo effect, the stuff the doctor tells you, whoop, it shuts your whole system down. Your immune system starts beating down on you because of a thought. If we change the thoughts, we change the body. So you start getting in the right environment, you come back to life. You can rebuild yourself. Amen, brother. So see, Sarah's going to be jealous because I got to hog you the whole time <laughs> over here. Tristan, man, you, you've got such a cool thing going. Can you please tell us how people can find you, um, just yeah. website or whatever? Yeah, we have a lot of websites because we, we've been pumping out these products and these programs, taking everything we've learned in our laboratory of the dojo and paying it forward, testing it with our students, and then creating very easy, digestible programs for people to go through. That's my whole thing. It's about like you can have this people sell you these programs, maybe all this information you feel like swamped by and you don't know what to do. So my websites, when you find them, you'll see I take you through a general process of learning. The main site is Satori, S-A-T-O-R-I, method.com. And you'll probably find just about everything that I'm up to from there. But I teach meditation and Qigong. I have several Qigong programs. I have something called Martial Yoga which we just released that unwinds the tension from the tissue and teaches you to use your breath and movement to rewire the negative signals in the brain that are creating the tension. So I do stuff like that. Awesome. Yes. This is, this is I mean, A, you're singing my song, and B, this is the stuff that I think people need a healthy dose of all the time, is learning how to self-medicate by drinking from you know that the, the core of the universe, right? I call it drinking from infinity, and and it's and it's one of those things where you know there's so much talk on the medical side. I really you know I really want guys like you out in the forefront and, and uh, just yeah pushing that envelope and teaching people how to do it and 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 live it and breathe it and all that. So man. Thank you, thank you for being here. I have such a good time hanging with you every time, and um, you know, um, I think I'll, I'll hug you again and kind of keep you away from Sarah so she just gets super <laughs> jealous. <laughs> well, so, I look forward to meeting Sarah too. Oh, she's adorable. So, a hey, um, Healthbridge Show dot uh, yeah Healthbridge Show dot com. I'm so bad with just websites. Is Probably. where we'll have archives and stuff of this if you guys want like more information type. But go to Satori Method. Uh, dot com to check out all the stuff that Tristan's doing. He is a gem of a guy. So thank you so much for being here, brother. Thank you, thank you. Always a great pleasure. I'll see you next time. <laughs>